All right, now we're going to go down to the bottom section of your graphic organizer, One Girl Among Many. Uh, this is the epilogue, which starts on page 189, and it is the last chapter of the book before it goes into some pictures of her when she was little with her brothers, some pictures of her in school with friends, some pictures of Pakistan and the country, some pictures of the terrorists and the Taliban. Some pictures of her praying in her religious temple. Picture of her in the hospital recovering from the shots. Pictures of her studying in school after. Letters that she wrote, letters from other people. And a picture of her with her family there, which is pretty cool. All right, so if you guys look now in the stream, there's a title called Epilogue, I Am Malala Pages. And this has the five, the four and a half pages that I'm about to read. So you have to click update the stream. On my 16th birthday, I was given the most extraordinary gift. I was invited to speak to the United Nations. It was the first of two trips I would make to New York that year. 400 people would be in attendance, high-ranking officials from all over the world, such as Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the UN, Gordon Brown, former UK Prime Minister, and ordinary children like me. It would be a far cry from the Solomon, solemn and fearful birthdays I'd had in Pakistan not long ago. My whole family traveled to New York. We saw Annie on Broadway. We stayed in a hotel where they bring pizza to your room on a silver tray. I liked the hustle and bustle of New York compared with sleepy Birmingham. I felt as if the city were my old friend after seeing it on Ugly Betty. Many people in Pakistan have been told that the US is a dark and godless place, but everyone I met there was quite nice. I couldn't wait to tell Moniba. America is a very nice place, but it was just as loud and crowded as other cities I've seen with its honking horns and people rushing here and there. It's like a developed Karachi. During my second trip, I met one of my favorite people in the US, a man named John Stewart, who invited me to his TV show to talk about my first book and the Malala Fund. He took my campaign very seriously, but he also made funny faces and asked if he could adopt me. I also met the real ugly Betty, America Ferreira, who was very pretty, and even President Barack Obama and his family. I was respectful, I believe, but I told him I did not like his drone strikes on Pakistan, that they would kill one bad person, innocent people are killed too, and terrorism spreads more. I also told him that if America spent less money on weapons and war and more on education, the world would be a better place. If God had given you a voice, I decided, you must use it even if you have to disagree with the President of the United States. The day of the UN speech, I was excited. I had amazing experiences and met amazing people. I'd even met the Queen of England and Prince Harry and David Beckham one day. But I was still me, a girl who likes to crack her knuckles as loud as she can, draw pictures to explain things, a girl who hates pasta and likes cupcakes, will always like her mother's rice, and now loves cheesy watsits and fish fingers, a girl who has to stay up letting, late studying for her physics test, a girl who worries that her best friend is mad at her, a girl like any other. Was it really possible I was gonna address the United Nation? How had my world changed? I dressed slowly that morning, putting on my favorite pink shalwar kameez and one of Benazir Bhutto's scarves. I had not written my speech with the only delegates in mind. I wrote it for every person around the world who could take courage from my words and stand up for his or her rights. I don't wanna be thought of as the girl who shot the Taliban, who was shot by the Taliban, but the girl who fought for education, the girl who stands up for peace and knowledge as her weapon. I said in my speech, Dear brothers and sisters, do remember one thing. Malala Day is not my day. Today is the day of every woman, every boy, and every girl who has raised their voice for their rights. Thousands of people have been killed by the terrorists and millions have been injured. I am just one of them. So here I stand, one girl among many. I speak not for myself, but for all girls and boys. I raise up my voice, not so that I can shout, but so that those without a voice can be heard. Those who have fought for their rights, those who the right to live in peace, their right to be treated with dignity, their right to equality of opportunity, and their right to be educated. On the 9th of October, 2012, the Taliban shot me on the left side of my forehead. 
They shot my friends too. They thought that the bullets would silence us, but they failed. And then out of that silence came thousands of voices. The terrorists thought that they would change our aims and stop our ambitions, but nothing changed in my life except this. Weakness, fear, and hopelessness died. Strength, power, and courage was born. I am the same, Alala. My ambitions are the same. My hopes are the same. My dreams are the same. One child, one teacher, one pen, and one book can change the world. As I heard the applause and took my seat, all I could think of was that I had come a long way from the Malala the toddler giving lessons to empty chairs at Kushal school, a long way from the girl who gave speeches to the bathroom mirror. Somehow by the grace of God, I really was speaking to millions of people. I had once asked God to make me taller. I have realized that God has answered my prayer. God has made me as tall as the sky, so tall that I could not measure myself, but my voice could reach people everywhere. I had promised a hundred rocket nafi when I'd first asked God to give me height. So I'd given him those prayers, but I know that with the immeasurable height, God has also given me the responsibility and a gift, the responsibility to make the world a more peaceful place, which I carry with me every moment of every day and the gift to be able to do so. Peace in every home, every street, every village, every country. This is my dream. Education for every boy and girl in the world to sit down on a chair and read my book with all my friends at school is my right. To see each and every human being with a smile of true happiness is my wish. I am Alala. My world has changed, but I have not. <laughs>